Welcome everybody in Montana beats Sacramento State today. A couple of notes for the folks listening at home. Uh, coach Hawk became the Big Sky Conference's uh, winningest coach of all time today with 124 career wins. Uh, Keelan White, uh, to my, my left here, screen right, um, caught the longest touchdown pass in Montana history, longest play from scrimmage in Montana history. So, uh, Coach Hawk, Keelan White, Tyler Flink, uh, Coach, we'll start with you. Just a, a great win for the Grizzlies. Your thoughts? Thanks, Tabes. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a good win to uh, to beat a good Sacramento State team, thirty four seven, and after score thirty four straight after being down seven nothing early was uh, was a great effort by our team. Um, I just really love our guys. I think we have such uh, quality young men on our team and in our locker room. They're a joy to coach, and uh, they're a credit to Montana. And they went out and took that game and, and uh, took it strongly. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud of uh, my football team and the guys in my locker room. And uh, I, I, uh, I can't wait for next week. So uh, I think we're getting better every week. Questions? <clears throat> Coach, first, congratulations. Uh, I just want to ask Thanks, you, man. you mentioned the, the start. I mean, you've talked all year about how this team doesn't seem to really get phased by much. I mean, how important was that in this game? And how are you guys able to turn the momentum and then carry the momentum for pretty much the rest of the game? Well, I think it starts with the fact that they're trained in a manner that develops phys physical and mental toughness. And it shows up in situations like that. Um, sort of like, you know, it, it, when we were at Washington a couple years ago and beat them, and they went right down the field less than two minutes and scored, and then we shut them out for 58 minutes. So uh, that's the medal of this team. It's how they're trained. And uh, it's not surprising to me. Can you talk about your defensive uh, game plan in this one? I mean, it seemed like you really crossed them up, especially uh, in their passing game. We did. You know, they I think they only completed like 30%, 33%, something like that. Um, we had some we had some good things for them. Um, certain formations, certain coverages were, were better than others, and we got it dialed in. Um, Their offense was a little different based on which quarterback was in. We didn't have much film on the on the young kid, uh, but we had some theory on what we should do against him, and I, I thought that was effective. Um, basically, it comes back down to our guys play hard, and um, they weren't holding the ball very much. You know, they were they were getting rid of it, and their, their timing wasn't quite right because of that, and uh, they struggled to complete passes. What were they averaging yardage-wise, game <coughs> points-wise, yardage-wise? I don't remember. Twenty points average. Well, well, yeah, I'd say more like thirty. <laughs> anyway, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the big play. It stayed twenty-one-seven for quite a while. Bobby, you first, and then Keelan. I hope will follow up. But uh, the thought to you know you're backed up at your own three. Um, the play goes in. <laughs> I mean, it just, it's kind of been, we've seen a lot of conservative football from time to time from you, and that was a, a home run. Can you take us through that play call? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a good situation for a couple things. You know, we were in quarterback sneak to get it out of the one foot line and give ourselves a little room. But, uh, you know, on, a, on the defensive side, you always coach him to expect a shot there. Um, like to play off coverage down there. Uh, it's, it's a good place for hard count. It's a good place for a, for a shot play. Um, certainly taking a shot there ended up being great. Uh, it's a lot easier to get 97 and one than, than 97 and 15 plays. So. Yeah, I mean, we were saying in the huddle the whole time, like, let's go march, like, let's go 99 down the field, let's do it. And um, we had seen that look earlier in the game and Cliff said next time we get that look he's going to pump the, the out route to Junior because that boundary corner was biting on it. So we pumped it and then that was open over the top. Cliff made a great throw. Tyler, some of the things I just asked Coach Huck, I mean, what were the keys to today's execution defensively? 
Um, I think that our coaches just put us in a really good spot and had a good game plan for us, and we truly believe that if we went out there and executed that, we'd get the win, and that's kind of what we did today. We just did our job and uh, executed the game plan that they put together. So um, we have great coaches, and we always just uh, execute and do what we're told. Keelan, on the touchdown, could you just describe what the feeling that you were sensing was like from your teammates in the whole stadium as they were going crazy after you scored that? Uh, I mean, it was great. Nothing better than scoring in Wall Grizz, that's all I can say. <laughs> you guys set a season high for offensive yards, scored five touchdowns. What do you like the most about how the offense is operating right now? We're just each doing our job. We're each grinding out what we need to grind out and getting uh, – Next play mentality, so if something goes wrong, we don't worry about it. It's the next play. And, uh, yeah, so. And Bobby, yeah. you, said, you said you think you guys are keep getting better and better. What do you, what are you liking the most about how the offense has been playing the past few Well, we, we, you know, we have 50 rushes for 305. Um, when you can do that, play defense like we're playing right now, it's going to be hard to – hard to beat us so the ability to run the ball effectively get the ball downfield hits hit passes um you know that's that's good balanced offense hard to stop and then tyler they they ran the ball a bit on the <clears throat> first two drives but you guys kind of shut down the run game after that just what was what was the feeling among you guys as as a defense being able to slow them down in that part of the game um, I just think they started off hot and they hit a few plays on us. Um, then we just got together and did what we needed to do to get back to it. Um, like I said earlier, we just trusted the game plan and stuck to it and it eventually uh, came out. Tyler, to piggyback off that, just you guys seem to settle in and you mentioned just kind of the game plan and things like that. How much of that was it after the first few drives? You guys just settling in, seeing what's in front of you and then just kind of rolling from there? Yeah, you know, you never know how... Um, you obviously want to start fast in every game that you play in, but sometimes things don't go your way. But we're always, uh, we're always going to fight back and do what we can to fight back, and that's exactly what we did. Things didn't go our way early, but uh, we just kept fighting and uh, ended up on top. There's been a couple of these games where you guys have had like the first couple of drives kind of feeling out process, and then the rest of the way you guys kind of roll. Can you just speak, I guess, to the confidence that the defense gains during a game that you guys maybe once you start seeing some success there? Yeah, I think it's just. Uh, all of us trust each other. Um, it's, a, it's a trust thing for the defense. We all trust that we're going to do our job. I mean, they're a good football team. They hit some plays on us. They're a good offense. But at the end of the day, we trust each other and do our job. And uh, we just keep it rolling once we start. Bobby, like Eric mentioned off the top, it's, it was kind of a record-setting night for you, for the team, for Keelan, just all these. What's it like to be part of a night like this where you get the coaching milestone and then you guys are breaking some records and winning a top 10 game? Well, it, it was cool in terms of uh, you know, like Justin Green was here for the first win. He was here for this one. Andy Thompson was here for the first one. So was Craig Paulson, and they were here tonight. And there's a couple guys on their coaching staff. I coached Donnell Pumphrey at uh, San Diego State, uh, and then obviously my guys. It, it was fun to be able to share that with them. And and uh, after the season, I'll reflect on some of that a little bit. But uh, very grateful for the opportunity to to. Uh, uh, hit that milestone coaching wise and grateful to the guys that got me into coaching and gave me chances and then also grateful uh, for my football team which is a damn fine football team. For both the players and Tyler we can start with you just to see coach get the, the record and you know you grew up in Missoula watching the Grizz just what's it like to maybe help get him get that as like his career kind of continues on? Yeah you know I grew up uh, watching every Grizz game coming to every home game and I watched him I was just a little guy when I was watching him his first time around here but I spent the last six years of my life here I can't thank him enough for everything he does he's a awesome coach great leader and uh, he puts us in a great position congrats to him. Yeah um I second that. <laughs> um, I didn't really know much about this place, to be honest. When I was a freshman coming in, I was just trying to get anything I could. But I'm glad I made the decision to come here and be coached by him. So it was good. <laughs> Great minds take life, Fritz. <laughs> Bobby Sachs stated not giving up many punt returns or punt return yards coming into this game. How was Junior able to break a couple of those 
free and how big were those? Oh, they're big. I mean, there's some, some great uh, field flipping plays. Um, he, he was obviously he was trying to kick it away from him, um, was somewhat effective. Uh, we pressured him a little bit and he was having to get it out quick, which he had tendency to line drive some. Um, you know, sometimes it, it gets away and he kicks away and you can't get your hands on it. It was set up pretty well a couple times. Um, we had one that was that was real big that a guy dove and got him down, uh, but it, it was good. The punt return was good. And then towards the end of the half, when everyone got the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, have you ever been involved in a game with that or ever seen anything like that before? And just what did you think of the way your team handled that coming back in the second half? Uh, yeah, I've been part of lots of stuff over the years. I I, I didn't think it was. I mean, I thought the referees did a good job and thought it was is what it is. Anybody else? Thanks, guys.